watching Fox Sports. Welcome to our coverage of the final session of the 2000 Qantas International Gymnastics Challenge coming to you from the Sydney Superdome. We've seen a remarkable week of competition with the world's very best in action. There are five more gold medals up for grabs tonight in the apparatus finals. The men will be performing on the vault, the parallel bars and the high bar and the women in action on the beam and the uneven bars. Liz Chekovic joins me in commentary and Liz, a terrific night for the Aussies last night. We picked up two golds and two bronze in the first lot of apparatus finals and possibly more on the way today. Well, we should hope so. We've got the top qualifiers on bars and beam tonight. Alana Slater on bars unveiled her double twisting double salto the other night and we hope she can repeat the performance. On beam we have Trudy McIntosh and Melinda Cleland. They'll be pushed by Sarah Murrow of Spain so it should be a pretty good evening. Well we also shouldn't forget the men's because this is going to be very exciting as well. Particularly the high bar final we've got the world champion, the world silver medalist and the European champion. Oh, it's just amazing. We would have expected De Jesus Caballo to be in the top qualifying spot but Saito from Japan is just ahead of him. The scores don't carry through but certainly the competition is going to be extremely tight. Well, that's one to watch out for a little later tonight, but first we begin with the men's vault final. So the start list for the men's vault, and Yoshihiro Saito of Japan, Guard Young of the United States, gold medalist on floor. His compatriot, Sean Townsend, is the top qualifier. The two Australians are Damien Istria and Pavel Mamin. Alexander Svitnikny of Ukraine, silver medalist on pommels, Omar Cortez of Spain, and from Germany, Jan-Peter Nikiferov. Yoshihiro Saito is uh, made two of the three finals tonight. We also see him on high bar, where he's uh, actually the top qualifier. Off and away in his first vault. Very, very nice. Choosing Yushchenko entry. Half turn onto the horse. And a layout front half off. 9.9 start value. And of course tonight on the vault, we'll see two different vaults from the men. It's the only time they vault twice. There's a half on, layout half off, excellent hip position throughout. Small margin of error for the men when they do the half on. And if they go sideways, it'll be a major problem, of course, because their horse is long ways. And a 9.5 for Saito, first vault. It's only 35 centimetres wide, the uh, box. Well, so, yes, you don't want to miss it, do you? I've seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, a different vault for his second attempt, and the scores are averaged. The runway is uh, 25 metres long, and Sato's using most of it. And another vault performed with excellent form. This time choosing the Kazamatsu vault. Both landings were excellent. So here's the half on and it's called Kazamatsu full, which is the same as a double twist in the post flight, half on and like a double twist off. Really nicely done, keeping inside those tram lines. Soto qualified with a 9.5, so he was the fifth highest qualifier. A 9.362 for his second vault, and his overall score, 9.431. Well, Guard Young, his confidence has to be sky high. A surprise winner of the floor. 22 years old, from Oklahoma. Living in Utah. Brigham Young University. He'll attack this. 
Oh, beautiful vault. Handspring on. I think two and a half twists off. That's so quick, isn't it? Oh. The handspring on. Sorry, one and a half twists off. Landing a bit low, off to one side. Still very well performed. 9.8 start value. It just drifts out of uh, those tram lines. Nine three seven five for his first vault. He's got a bit to do then to catch Sato. Generally, they'll do a stronger vault first as well. Guard Young's father, as we've mentioned, uh, also an Olympian back in 1976, was on the U.S. team gymnastics, and he was also a, an all-round champion in college gymnastics. A very good pedigree. Mm. Great bonus for him being able to go home and say, hey, I won the floor at the uh, test event. The US men have traditionally been quite good on floor. Second vault for Guard Young of the United States. Okay, having troubles on that. That's a super high with a half turn and a layout front. Some directional problems and also some landing problems. Guard Young, the sixth highest qualifier. So here we are, cutting around the side a bit and travelling quite a way over, so major deductions in the direction area as well as the stumble on the landing. He's low, right. Quite low, yeah. His right hand slipped a little on the bolt too, and second bolt only an 8.85, so 9.112 for Guard Young. Sean Townsend, second uh, of the Americans in the vault field. Choosing the handspring double front, tucked. Most spectacular vault. Whoa, not quite. He looked like he had it, he opened out, he looked very, very confident, but too early with the opening and just couldn't hold the position at the end. Looks good there, and you can just see him opening, his head goes back slightly. So the full five tenths for the fall. 10 -0 start value, he's got a bit to play with, but that's going to hurt him quite a bit. Should have just pulled the Salto around for a touch longer. That's the important thing, is he got, at least got the feet down first. Yes, yes, make they it count. Yeah, that's right. So, score for the first vault is in now, 9.125. Second vault for Sean Townsend. And that's a Sukahara entry with a one and a half twist in the post flight. Kazamatsu, one and a half. Half on, one and a half off. Much better performed. A little bit piked through the hips. Perhaps lacking some elevation. 92624, his second vault. Sean Townsend score then a 9.193. Well, Damien Istria from Queensland, the youngest man in this field at uh, 17. What a great thrill for him to uh, make a final, this.
Yes, and he's trying <coughs> Kazumatsu full. Beautifully done. The Kazumatsu vault is actually like a Sugahara with a full twist. And when you say Kazumatsu full, it means the Kazumatsu with an extra full twist on it. So it's actually like a double twist. Half on, double twist off. Chest down, just a bit on the landing. Pretty good body position. And let's look at the distances. He's got to get past the last line to avoid any deductions. He gets almost there, about one-tenth off of the distance there. And a 9.45 for Damien Istria, first vault. Score to beat is still Saito's 9.431, which was the, he was the first competitor, Saito. So he's sitting on the lead. What can Istria do? Well, that's a pretty good one. That's a handspring front in layout position with a half turn. Nine six start value, so he can't score extremely high on this, but he has performed it well. well Istria was the eighth qualifier for the final. If he can beat a couple, he'll be pleased. Showing good stretch, spotting the floor. Perhaps could have done with a tiny bit more rotation at the beginning to hold the stretch for longer over the top. You'll see he's piping in a trifle early. Second score is in, 9.287. Overall, 9.368. He's in second place. He's uh, edged the two Americans. That's great. In the men's representing Australia, the Now, Pavel Mamin. This is one of Pavel's strongest apparatus. And also using the Kazumatsu full, great deal of distance on it. Unfortunately, a little bit off to one side, but distance-wise, superb. The briefest uh, chance to get some advice from Warwick Forbes. Uh, good distance off to one side no deduction if they stay inside the red lines it's long but it's not really high enough nine point three three seven first ball for Pavel Mamin born in Moscow 28 years ago but been representing Australia for the last uh, five years Spent some time in the circus, didn't he, Liz? Yes, he's a versatile person. I think he just missed the the sport itself. Second ball, Pavel Mamin. Oh, too low. Lacking the rotation again, and that's what uh, Warwick Forbes had said to him. He needed more from the board onto the horse, and he obviously hasn't been able to do that. But choosing the same two vaults as Istria, but not performing them quite the as well. The ankle okay? The hands came down early. He knew he wasn't there. Yes. Protecting himself. Too much distance and not quite enough height and rotation. Understandably, only an 8.85 for his second bolt. 9.093. In the men's one, representing Ukraine, Alexander Now, Alexander of Ukraine, he shot at a medal here. He was the fourth highest qualifier with a 9.55. A very good all-around gymnast. And spring double front. Just about stands it up, and that's interesting because the vaulting uh, tariff indicated he was going to do a Yushchenko one and a half twist, and it flashed up a nine six start value. And there he was doing a handspring double front, which should have been a ten value. You can see in the background there nine point six, and I did see the vaulting code; it had the wrong one. And there we are, handspring double front. So 
There's been an error somehow. Vault itself, very hard to get sufficient rotation on. Gymnast incur a penalty for that, Liz. If the wrong score or, or a vault number goes up, Liz, that's not the gymnast's fault. Uh, it may not be, and I don't believe that the men's deductions are exactly the same as the women. The women have a flat point three. Nine four seven five. So he couldn't be, couldn't have had a point three off for that if he's got nine four seven five out of ten. <laughs> Impossible with the landing errors he's had. A little bit of drama. I'm sure Alexander can. Uh, I don't keep think he's mind worried about job. it. No. <laughs> That's your problem, judges. I'll just do the vault. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Number two. Five five three two. That's you, Shenko. One and a half. So he's done that well. And that is a 9 6 start value. So 9 6 is what he would receive if it was uh, perfect in the eyes of the judges. Nice straight entry, good body position, and minor landing deductions. Just a tenth for that step forward. He holds his grounded foot. Scorpi, second vault uh, is in, 9.275, and his overall score, 9.375. He takes second position. In the men's vaulting line, representing Spain, 22-year-old Omar Cortez from Madrid. Still looking for someone to beat to Saito's opening score of 9431. Pretty good. Kazumatsu. He's half on. And double twist off. Kazumatsu full. Wasn't right on the end of the springboard, was he? That had some uh, room there if he wanted to get a little more energy out of the springboard. Directionally, pretty good. Tiny bit out. Cortez, 9.35. Cortez, 9.35 for his first vault. It's a bit tough for him to catch Saito with that first vault. Judges have been a little quicker this evening. The scores are coming in with that much fuss. Mm. Now, that's interesting. The number showing up there is a 3532, which is what he's just performed, which is the Kazumatsu full. So let's see what he does here. He's doing a handspring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's in trouble. Yeah, definitely. He's landed on a stiff knee, and oh, dearie me. No, he can't get up. He would like to greet the judges. He's going to present the judges. Oh. He's hurt that. That's a great shame for Cortez. To see him landing, he had um, a stiff knee and a little bit of a twist coming around. And uh, I would suggest he's not going to be doing much too, too much gymnastics tonight. This is scheduled to be in the high bar. Don't really want to watch this. <laughs> but here he's doing the half on, one and a half. And there we are, he's just landed stiff. Yes, people around us watching on the big screen have just cringed. Exactly. Kazumatsu, one and a half. Out to our. You can hear the groans. That's um, what we're watching. People here are watching as well on the lovely big screen here at the Sydney Superdome. But um, I think he's a brave soldier. He's uh, the pain that he must be feeling is uh, keeping well within himself. Not a nice thing to happen at all. Medical staff attending to him promptly. So let's hope it's not as serious as it looks. Well, it's a risky sport at times. Omar Cortez surely won't compete in the high bar, but he's still got 8312 for that second vault. 8.831. Well, that injury for 
Cortez. Just to be just a tiny bit unsettling for young Peter Nikiferov of Germany, who is the last competitor up in bolts. Performed very well in the qualifying. Second highest qualifier with 9.575. And he's going to attempt a handspring double front. Oh, yes, very good. There's actually one man in the world who can actually perform that with a half twist out. And that's an oh. incredibly difficult vault to do. He's kidding. <laughs> Nick Ferrell, he and some others felt he was a little unlucky in pommels and was marked down a bit after a good routine. So although it's a deep squat, he's still not too much else in the deductions. Plenty of height from the horse. Good distance and the direction being fine. And young Peter has received a 9-5-2-5 for his first bolt. Now he is in serious contention here because Saito's overall score, Romani, 9.431. That's what he must beat with the average of his two. So he's got yeah. one higher. And according to those tariffs up there, he's actually attempting the same vault as Cortez did in his second vault. He'll be having a different result. Exactly. Nine point six start value. Much better. Oh well, is that a gold medal vault from Jan Peter and Nikki Ferov? Could well be. He needs nine three something. <laughs> <laughs> My maths aren't quick enough to work it out exactly, but he's got to be thereabouts. Good lift off the horse, stretched hips throughout, and uh, really very good landing. Well done. Oh, I think he's just missed it. Yes, 9.262. He's come in in silver medal position with 9.393. So it's Yoshihiro Saito who wins the vault. I wonder if uh, his teammate Naoya Sukahara can do something. He'll be on parallel bars and high bar. So gold medal goes to Yoshihiro Saito of Japan with a 9.431. Close behind him, Jan Peter Nikiferov of Germany, 9.4. 393. Then it was Ukraine's Alexander Svetlikny, 9375. A great result for Damien Istria in fourth. The two Americans, Sean Townsend and Guard Young, Pavel Mamin of Australia, and the injured, not too badly, we hope, Omar Cortez of Spain, 8.831. The best gymnastics performance in the history of the Olympics occurred in Barcelona in 1992 when the 22-year-old Russian Vitaly Sherbo won a total of six gold medals. The Parallel Bars, a men's event, was used in the first of the modern Olympics in Athens in 1896. But it wasn't until 1936 in Berlin that the uneven Parallel Bars, a women's event, was included in the competition. And it was also those games that introduced televised coverage and the torch relay. There are our eight finalists for the parallel bars and Australia's Philip Rizzo, gold medalist on pommels, will be first away. Top qualifier is Jesus Caballo of Spain. From Slovenia, Mitya Petkovsek, Sean Townsend of the USA. Zeng Li Hu was a silver medalist on floor. Naoya Sukahara, silver medalist on rings. Jan Kushara of France and Guard Young of the United States. And the first women's final today is the uneven bars. Here's our top eight qualifier, Sarah Morrow of Spain, Jeanette Antolin of the USA, Emily Fournier, the all-round champion, Esther Moya, the gold medalist on the vault, Jackie Dunn from Australia, Natalia Horodini, Yang Yun of China, and Alana Slater, the Australian, the top qualifier. Well, there's plenty of encouragement for Philip Rizzo, the Australian who will be First up on parallel bars, go Choco, they're saying. Choco is the 18-year-old's nickname. Doesn't sound that flattering, but I don't think he minds. And he's uh, having a great meeting here with gold medal already in the bag.
Philippe is a promising all-around gymnast. And he's just hoping to find his consistency at this international level. It's all part of getting all that experience and what a, no better way to get it than in this venue in front of the hometown crowd. Green lights on. He can set about the business. And opening with flares on the end. Obviously adapted from Pommel Hoist horse and a tip out some problems pressing to handstand Healy turn through to one bar pressing up that's smooth back toss to handstand a bit short on that oh he's lucky to pull that this man around and a similar problem that he had in the qualifying competition back toss going over too far and sort of forcing him here's the healy turn hop to one bar straddle through and pressing up and there's the dismount really has to pull it around tight because he's starting from a poor position reserve the eighth qualifier for parallel bars so he's not really expecting to be amongst the medals next to men like caballo and petkasek and Jan Kushara. Great experience for him, though. And 8.9 for our first competitor, Philip Rizzo of Australia. Commencing the women's and even bumpers final competition, representing Spain. First to go on the bars is Spain Star Morrow. Stalder roll through to Eagle Grip. Healy turn, second Healy turn through to Jaeger. Plenty in this routine. Giant half, Healy turn down, counter swing legs together. And full in back out. Some leg separation as she releases the bar, quite noticeable. And a small shuffle of the foot on the landing. Here's that Healy turn through to Jaeger. Catches that at a reasonably good distance. Watch for the feet as she leaves the bar. Right apart there. You get an appreciation for how tiny she is with that shot. She's 15 years of age, but she is one of the smallest Score. competitors here. Here comes her score. A 9.487. On the men's parallel bars finals, representing Spain, Jesus Caballo. Jesus Caballo. Another famous name in Spanish gymnastics. Father's a coach of the women's team. He's got a couple of younger brothers who are also promising gymnasts in Manuel and Xavier. Excellent to pelt. Watch this. He's got great body line and just being a little bit taller than some of the other gymnasts looks magnificent when he swings. He's got a pop through there. That's called the caballo. Extremely flexible shoulders. Diamandov, Diamandov to one bar. This is top notch. Let's hope he can finish it off. Stutz to handstand. Pretty close to a stick. Very, very little wrong with that routine. Got an innovative element. All of the moves were done just about to their maximum. Really only the dismount showing a little bit of a problem. And there's that hop to one bar. There's sideways kip and back through to handstand. Setting up for his dismount, legs tight together and a minor deduction on the landing. You're looking for something in the order of 9-7. That was his qualifying score. A score is shared, in fact, with Jan Kuchera. So he and the Frenchman come in as 
joint top qualifiers. Scoring for Jesus Caballo, 9-5. At the moment, has him in top position. From America, Jeanette Antelin. Her only final. So one big chance here. She came in as the fourth qualifier. And let's watch out for her first release. Only girl in the world to perform it. And it's quite spectacular. L grip through to layout Jaeger. Oops, missed it. She looked like she had it. Well, looked like the correct distance even. That's a bit of a mystery as to why she's peeled off. She had no problems in the warm up, catching it quite easily. Now she has to regroup and finish off this routine as best as she can. She has such a powerful swing. So through to reverse grip, under swing to the low bar. Nice little connection. Swinging back to the L grip again. Good dismount. Double front half out from an L grip, which is most unusual. Quite an innovative routine from Jeanette Antelin, but that fall will cost her dearly. A lot of swing. Let's see what happens here. Does she get her hands on? She looks like she does. I think she just didn't reach properly with the right hand. The left hand was right there. And the dismount also from L grip. Kicks it up, starts as a pike and finishes with a tuck. There's the score and it's a disappointing 8.862. The men's caravan final representing Slovenia. 23-year-old Mitya Petkovsic from Ljubljana in Slovenia. Third man up on parallel bars. A qualifying score of 9.65 is a chance for a medal here. He's come a long way for one routine because he only competed one routine in the qualifiers. This is his only apparatus. Well performed on the moy, just touching the legs a little bit, and he's out of control just to this part. And the front salto in straddle position. body line. Excellent dismount. I suspect he might be judged down a little bit through the middle part of that routine. He doesn't seem to have complete control over all of his pirouetting elements. Here's the Moy. Taps his legs a little bit on the bar. Hop to one bar, just a little bit short on that. And it just stuts to one bar, half pirouette out. Front salto in a straddle. Good dismount. Gets plenty of lift from the bar. Well, the score is in now, and it's a pretty good one, too, for Mitya Petkovsek. 9.637. That's now the one to beat. We're now looking at the individual all-around champion and the only girl to qualify for all four apparatus finals, Emily Fournier of Canada. Tight one and a half, half turnout, roll to eagle grip giant, a little bit of bent arms coming over the top of the bar there. And Ginga a bit heavy, close to the bar, so lacking a bit of amplitude through this section. Gathering a bit of speed now, and double straight. It's a good routine. The impressive thing about Fournier is she's just been so consistent right throughout 
this competition. She really hasn't put a foot wrong. And here you see the L grip giant half fair out, small arm bend coming over the top and into the ginger and arms bending a little bit as she's catching. Ideally want full stretch. Under swing to the low bar. Nice height on the dismount and good body position as well. She just got picked for the bronze medal on the floor by Australia's Brooke Walker. Uh, a 9.4, not quite as good as Morrow's 9.487, but at the moment Fournier is in second position. Well, Sean Townsend appearing in his second final tonight. This is fifth in the vaults. What can the American do on P bars? Opening with a giant and a full turn and giant to double salto. Good clearance of the legs through the bar. Tip held to the end of the parallel bars there. Lots of good swinging elements and a second tip, tip held in succession. Back toss, right to handstand. Close to a stick. That's a pretty classy routine. Well, 9.637 to score he has to beat. He comes in with a 9.5 as a qualifying score. He's a strong worker on this apparatus. Perhaps not the same elegance as Caballo, but very dynamic. There's that tip belt. Need to clear the legs from the bar, and he does that. Half pirouette and straight into a second one. Now the score's in for Townsend. 9.462. He's in third at the moment. And the women's uneven bars final, representing Spain. From Spain, Esther Moya, the gold medalist on the vault. Doesn't waste any time getting onto the bars. Swing through to reverse grip. Full pirouette, another full pirouette through to eagle grip and a release. So nice combinations there. A little bit original. Clean worker. Smooth into her Kutchev. Spanish girls have very nice body lines through all their work. And a double front, half out, fix the landing. So that is the best routine we've seen so far. Well, her teammate, Sarah Morrow, has the score to beat at this stage. A 9.487. And a very impressive routine from Esther Moyer. So you can see the pirouette through to that reverse grip it was. And a uh, Jaeger. Little backward circle around. Up to the high bar. And the dismount, very clean. A tiny bit of leg separation as she releases the bar, but a good landing position. In the men's competition today, she qualified for the, the final the in eighth Rangers position, just sneaking in. But she's really stepped it up a notch here in the final. Score through, a 9.525, and she moves into the lead. Bonus and exercise presentation. On the men's parallel bars, represented in China. Zheng Li Hu of China. Zheng Li Hu. It's a fourth best qualifier with a 9.6. And choosing the Moy, not quite as good amplitude coming through as some of the others we've seen. Stutz to one bar. Back toss should control that a little bit more through to a double back. So quite difficult combinations there. Double back between the bars again. And a double pike. It's a short routine, well composed, packed full of difficulty. 
floor silver medalist Zheng Li Hu. There you go, that tip held. Legs could have been held a little high and a tiny bit of leg separation as he hops to one bar there as well. And there's the stutz to one bar. Back toss. Could have controlled it for a tiny bit longer but straight into the double tuck. He won't be displeased with this score. He's got him in the gold medal position at the moment, a 9.65 for Zheng Li Hu. My weapons are in bars, representing Australia. Jackie The first of the Australian ends is Jackie Dunn, and the crowd comes to life. The Aussie girls qualifying one and two. Jackie Dunn in second position after the all around. But only just by a whisker. Healy turn through to eagle grip. Half turn or another Healy turn out of that. So into Jaeger. Pack Salto. Through mostly the difficult part of the routine, just a tiny little bobble there on that handstand half. Giant full Arabian double dismount and a stitch. Well, one tiny little error in that program, but at this level, one tiny little error can make the difference between gold and no medal at all. So. Mm -hmm. I think we, we should uh, nickname her Miss Reliable on this apparatus because she's really gaining a reputation for always hitting this routine. It's great to see. There's the pack salto. Now watch for the little bit of a leg separation. I think she wasn't sure whether she was going to get over or not. Just a minor problem though. And the dismount Arabian double front. She's done a very good routine. Cheer goes up, it's a 9.612, and Jackie Dunn takes over the lead. The only man to have made five apparatus finals on the men's side of things is Naoya Sugahara. Particularly strong on P bars. medalist on this apparatus at world level giant full and second one and transferring to single bar oh there's a major problem so that hand walk and the lower back arch is going to cost him dearly double tuck oh yes he's really in trouble now he's off the bar He's going to finish the routine. The silver medalist on parallel bars in Tianjin last year. Mm. Rhythm's very important on parallel bars. You get ahead of yourself a little bit. It's so hard to control the routine. A bit of a cascade effect. Double tuck between the bars, backwards. back toss to handstand once again losing control a bit through his lower back not a good day for him on parallel bars yes uh, Sukahara will be disappointed the giant fall even just a little bit of leg separation and there's the giant fall but landing on one bar very nicely done he really has a name for himself as an all-around uh, exponent, but a bronze and silver medal at World Championships on this particular apparatus, and he will be quite upset that he hasn't given his best. And, uh, well, it's probably a while since he's had a score as low as that on parallel bars, 8.625. In the women's uneven bar competition, 
representing Ukraine. Back across on the bar, the Ukraine's Natalia Hordini, 15 years of age, one of the youngest competitors in the field. Third best qualifier. Stalled up, rolling through to Eagle Grip. Nicely performed Pike Jaeger, transferring to the low bar with an underswing. And back into eagle grip and full pirouette out of that eagle grip giant. And Arabian double front, pretty good landing, so an aggressive bar routine from Horodini. Well, this is going to be interesting. 9.612, Jackie Dunn score to beat. In the evaluation of the women's routine, so these are very nice to perform Pike Jaeger. To that evaluation, the value parts, that is the different elements, bonus points, which equals one. So scoop onto the bar, transferring back up to the high bar. The gymnasts need two bar changes during the routine. The special requirements peculiar to that event. The combination of instruction and Arabian and double front knees tight together very nice to see that looking for the score and she moves into the lead a 9.650 well Jan Kushera of France is good enough to take the gold here, if he can uh, put it together. Only 20, born and lives in Lyon. And 9.65 the score to beat. He comes in with a 9.7. Good quality, tip out. Healy turn, hop to single bar. Looking good. It's a stutz to one bar. So he's using both bars sideways. Appears to be in good control. Back toss, nicely done. Got a stick, and he does. That might just do it for him. The only one to stick the dismount properly this evening on this apparatus. Some parallel bars has caused gymnasts some problems this evening. It's a tricky apparatus to compete well. They all are, actually. He's, he's very much in control throughout this routine. There's the stutz to one bar. Getting the legs through, nice and straight. Zeng Li Hu's is the score to beat, 9.65. That back toss and dead stick, great. Now it's in, and there's a smile because that's the best score so far. 9.762 for Jan Kushra at France. That's gold medal position, only one man to come. From China, the all-around bronze medal, Yan Yun. Very promising up-and-comer on the Chinese scene. Reverse grip swing and a full pirouette around one arm. That's called a B after a Chinese teammate. Straight into release and down to the low bar using a pack salto. Little squat on the low bar there attracts a one-tenth deduction. They're supposed to go through a handstand or high cast. Whoa, too far. So... With that fall, that assures Jackie Dunn of at least one medal, at least the silver, or sorry, at least the bronze. She's in second position so far, so it will depend on what Slater does, whether she gets the bronze or the silver. Oh, double layer, it looked like she slipped off the bar just slightly. Well, she looks quite upset. 
And Takachi of itself was beautifully high, just a little bit backwards, unfortunately. And watch this swing around one arm. That's the B through to eagle grip, straight into the release. Amazingly difficult combination. Pack Salto. The glide, half turn glide compositionally is not the best. And she's swinging from eagle grip there, half turn, Kachev, and just too long. Coach stands in in case she's going to hit the low bar. Well, that ball attracting a 0.5 deduction and will certainly rule her out of medal contention. The Chinese girls, when they hit their routines, they just look fantastic, but tend to be a little inconsistent at times. Yeah, young score coming through now. And it's a disappointing 9.075. Final competitor on parallel bars is Guard Young of the United States. 9.762 score to beat. I don't know that Guard Young's got that in him. 9.2 was his qualifying score. No reason to hold back. This is his uh, final routine for the night. bit of a knee bend and yet the Amadov to one bar Healy turn hop to half or on to one bar a little bit leg form problems I can't see this coming up into a gold medal position at all double pike probably well performed at his own level he's happy with his performance but it uh, doesn't appear to be good enough to grab a medal for this evening on that apparatus. And there's the tip belt, just bangs his legs a little bit on the bar coming through. All of those small errors add up. And there's the giant. Diamondov to one bar. Sort of like a little Healy turn out. Second Healy turn and hopping again to one bar, but you can still see small leg separations, knees a little bit bent coming through. And pretty good dismount, nice and high. Score comes in for Guard Young of the United States, 9.087. Well, that means that it's Jan Kushra of France who wins it from Zengli Hu and Mitya Pitkovsek. So, great result for the Frenchman, Jan Kushra, one of Lyon's finest. Well, the final competitor in the bar. With Alana Slater, the top qualifier, it all comes down to the next few minutes. She's had a very, very long wait. Three half turn right on top of the bar. Looks good so far. Needs to do a clean part through here. She has a hop full. That's nice. Excellent. Now the main section here is her new dismount. It's an unknown. She's only performed it once before. The double-double. Oh, oh, brilliant! Well, what a performance from Alana Slater. That's got to be good enough for the gold medal. Can this girl perform under pressure? She's great in these big meets. The national champion. The Jaeger through to the pack Salto. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit close on the Jaeger if you're getting fussy about it. A little connection through to the high bar there. You can hear the cheer from the crowd going up. And it's because there's a 9.775 for Alana Slater, and she is our gold medalist. So, 
The results of the uneven bars final, and it's great news for Australia. Alana Slater first, Natalia Horodini of Ukraine second, and Jackie Dunn picking up yet another medal for the Aussies in third position. By confirming the results in parallel bars, it's Jan Kushra of France, Zheng Li Hu of China second in 9.65, third was Mircea Petkovsek of Slovenia, 9.637, then Caballo of Spain, Townsend and Young of the United States, Philip Rizzo of Australia, and Naoya Sukahara of Japan. Now we're using Qantas International Gymnastics, women's uneven bar gold medalist, representing Australia, Alana Slater. Well, collecting Australia's third gold of the meet, Alana Slater on the bars. An outstanding performance. The national champion with our highest place at the World Championships, finishing ninth all around. An exceptional the performance. Taking the silver, Natalia Korodini of Ukraine. The Ukraine athletes uh, performing well at the Superdome. Yes, they'll certainly be taking some medals home. The bronze medal awarded to representing Australia, Jackie Dunn. And adding to our tally, Jackie Dunn, young South Australian. Good to hear Australian audiences really getting behind their athletes when they get the chance. We have a tendency to be a bit quieter than some other audiences when they've got their athletes performing in front of them. It's, uh, things are changing a bit, I think. Good crowd turning up today. It certainly is, and they're being treated to quite a display from these gymnasts. And, of course, it's always nicer when the home team wins. <laughs> Not that we're biased, of course. Not up here. And so there's our final results. Alana Slater, gold. Natalia Horodini, silver. And Jackie Dunn, bronze. Special moment for Alana Slater. Big things expected from our women's team at the Olympics and the preparations right on track at the moment. So Alana, you've just picked up your first gold international medal. Yes, it's very exciting. Uh, your bar routine, a very difficult bar routine, only the second time you put that dismount in. Yes, it is the second time. Did it first the other day and today I was just hoping to do it the same as what I did the day before and go for a tidy routine. And I thought the second half of your routine looked particularly sharp today. Yes, I think it's the best second half I've ever done in my routine. A little bit more confident than what I had done before. I've been hitting my routines a bit more. So, yeah, I was a bit more confident. Just went for it. Had nothing to lose, really. Congratulations on your medal and we wish you luck in the next couple of months. Thank you very much. Gymnasium currently means high school in Germany, where it's believed most students actually wear clothes especially in winter.
field for the high bar. And for many, it's a favourite. Spectacular. Zoltan Supala of Hungary. World champion, Jesus Caballo of Spain. Alexander Svetlikny of the Ukraine. Australia's competitor is Brennan Dowrick. Yoshihiro Saito. France's Florent Marie. Now, Zheng Li Hu comes in for Omar Cortez of Spain, who has an injured knee. And from Japan, Naoya Sukahara. And finalists for the women's beam, Yang Yun of China comes in for Emily Fournier, Natalia Horodini, Sarah Morrow, Trudy McIntosh, the top qualifier, and a chance to pick up yet another medal here. Andrea Izarescu of Romania, Hui Yuan Wan, the main threat to Trudy McIntosh in this final. Melinda Cleland, the second of the Aussies, and from France, Ludovine Fernand. So a late call-up to Yang Yun of China on the beam. Emily Fournier. I think just coming to a very busy program over the last couple of days. Wolf jump, full turn, wolf jump. Really difficult little combination there. The gymnasts need to show seven special requirements, and one of them is two gymnastic elements connected, and that was just what you saw. Lip, layout, layout. That's the second of the special requirements. Whoa, big wobble there. Going to lose the bonus points connected to that series, which is a 0.1 bonus. So at least no fall. Change leg leap, tuck jump full, changement jump. Chinese always have a nice variation in rhythm and pace in their choreography. Wolf jump through to a Corbett flick sideways to support. It's very, very difficult. Front handspring, split jump. She's got a lot of combinations in the routine. In fact, all, you'll see that from all of the girls. Each combination picking up either a 0.1 or 0.2 bonus. So they can build their start values up to 10. And a gainer, double twist off the side of the beam, perfectly performed. So just that one problem, mid-routine on the tumbling line. Flip, lay out, lay out, just shoulder dropping one side. She's going to lose just about as much as a fall there, at least 0.3, I would think. The rest of the routine is really very nice, and in particular the quality of her leaps and jumps. <laughs> Change leg leap, and watch... Oh. Almost, I was going to say, watch the jump fall. There's the wolf jump three quarters straight into that sideways Corbett. Sideways Corbett's hard enough on its own, let alone in combination. And a new dismount, it's a D value, that means D for almost the most difficult, E being the most difficult. And uh, made popular by Svetlana Korkina, who's the, who was the world champion in 97. Uh, Set the standard at the moment, a 9.525. Well, Hungary's Zoltan Sopola, maybe the oldest man in the field. I won't uh, stop him putting in a good routine here. his best results on high bar was actually in Australia World Championships in Brisbane in 94 finished mm. second stalled a fall to one arm straight to Ginger. that's a nice combination inside the routine there are three special requirements for men an element with both hands in L grip which you can see now. An element with grip release and flight and an in-bar element. That's when they swing close into the bar. So he's done all of those. Pull in, back out, stick to dismount. He looked a little bit shaky at the beginning of the routine. I'm not so sure he hasn't missed some of his connections. Pretty fair effort though from... Uh... Yeah, he's got a quite a bit of one-arm work, which we don't see so much of these days. See, there's that stalled a full through to one arm giant
And Sultan Supala, well, they've left themselves plenty of room to move the judges. They've only given Supala a nine. On Wilkes Mountain Street, representing Ukraine. And Natalia Horodini is having a good day so far. So the medalist on bars. Qualified for the beam final in equal sixth position with a 9.437. 9.525 is the score to beat. Mounts with a very high pike front salto into an immediate jump. Ring jump, second ring jump, and she's missed the connection there, really. I think it's a bit too slow, and a small wobble at the end of the second one. Close to the beam work, one of these special requirements. Women have seven. Salto tucked wolf jump and this time the connection is better. Change leg lead, straddle jump half turn. Full turn on one foot, that's one of the other special requirements. And a mixed series, cat leap through to side salto, so that's a gymnastic and an acrobatic element connected. <laughs> just makes it in time. We heard the buzzer was 10 seconds to go and the second buzzer went just as she landed, so she should be all right there and avoid the penalty for being over time. Well, she managed to stay on. There are a few wobbles there. Front salto wolf jump. That's one of her better connections. And had a little wobble on a half turn, which really has no value at all. And another small wobble here. It's got through a 9.350. On the unit's horizontal bar, finds representing the stage. Well, this is a moment we've all been looking forward to. The reigning world champion on high bar. In fact, twice he's taken the title. 96 and 99. Jesus Caballo of Spain. Comes to the final. I was only the second highest qualifier. Behind Saito of Japan. Stalled uh, through to full twist and cut. Jeb, he's off. Way too far back. Didn't even touch the bar. It... But the complexity of that element is such that when they perform it well and you don't really understand how difficult it is and how low the margin for error is. So it hasn't been his best meet, really. When he came out, he was fully expecting to compete in the all-around but had to withdraw from a couple of the... Uh, jumping apparatus, he hurt his foot just a little bit, so didn't compete in floor and vault. I'm sure he's hoping for a better performance next time he comes to Australia. Let's see if he does it again. He's going for it. No. Stoop in through to reverse, and that's the Caballo, and straight through to Ginger. Stoop in through to reverse almost over too far and look at that beautiful L grip position right on top of the bar and double double dismount and to his knees <laughs> and 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he can smile about it. Yes. Chalk it up to whatever. So he's stalled her in here, picks up a lot of swing and opens too late. Got no chance of catching. And I don't know that the coach had any chance of catching him either. Double, double dismount, just knee crumbles down. I don't know he'll get off to the full fall, but certainly. Well, that's not up to his usual uh, impeccable performance. Jesus Caballo. A positive out of that is that he's okay. The mats doing their job. Uh, only an 8.65 for Jesus Caballo, and that's really opened up this final. Little Sarah Morrow is in medal contention again here on the beam this time. Hasn't managed to crack it yet, maybe with her final performance. She is certainly capable of a very high score. In fact, she had a couple of tiny little problems in the all-around on this apparatus, so she's got room for improvement, would you believe it, after scoring a 9.712. Layout, mount. Good to see a different approach from time to time. Not many girls can do that successfully. Change leg side leap to support. She's got a lovely style about her in her work. Well done. I always think the side solder is the most difficult landing that a gymnast can attempt. Pike jump, three quarter Shushan over to support. Looking good so far. Be a telling moment. Flip layout, flip. Beautiful. And that's a little mixed series. Walk over and two little changement jumps. Full turn. Full twisting Corbett. And if she can do a good dismount, she's going to be very, very tough to beat. Almost six, and the only noticeable deduction in that routine is that step on the dismount. The rest of it clean as a whistle. Well, that was a terrific performance from Sarah Morrow. Trudy McIntosh, the top qualifier, is up next, and she's certainly going to keep her honest. The only place that the judges may deduct a little bit is on height of her change leg side leap and the little three-quarter shushan over to support that looks good this is so hard to do a salto sideways and be in balance and this one here pike jump three-quarter shushan over to support and that might be somewhere that the judges feel that a little 0.05 is coming off scores at 9.65. Well, Alexander Svetlikne of Ukraine is ready to try to add to his medal tally. He's already got a silver on pommels, bronze on vault, and the first two competitors on high bar haven't set a high score. He's only got to beat nine at the moment. Stoop into L grip. And lay out Jaeger. That's so nicely done. Stalled it full. That's the in bar work we were mentioning before. Double double. Whoa, good routine. So with the world champion Caballo out of the frame, it's up to fellas like Svetlikny to state their case. He's put a good case here. That was nice. A pike stalled a full pirouette out. 
and he's coming out into his L grip position and nicely judged front layout Jaeger Litney scored a 9 4 7 5 in the all around to qualify for the high bar final and the score like that will uh, really put some pressure on those to follow well 9.437 smile he's entitled to that he's in gold medal position just at the moment crunch time now for Trudy McIntosh the Commonwealth champion on the beam and the top qualifier but she has to top Sarah Morrow let's hope she can and pick up her second gold medal of these championships picking up speed nice straight layout looking very confident Salto. Oh, she's got a big wobble there. Just about missed her feet, actually. So there's her gymnastic series. We'll change leg wolf jump through to turning Shushan over and to support. Duck dismount is essential for her, having had that small problem earlier in the routine. Oh, big jump forwards. I don't think it's going to do it for her. Well, that's disappointing. We know she's capable of better. And here's a series very nicely performed, showing good stretch of the body throughout that layout. And that front salto with a little jump, she only, uh, she's had a little bit of trouble with that this week. Just managed the front salto on its own earlier, so it's been a trifle off direction. There's a full turn, full and a quarter actually. And the dismount, uncharacteristically forward, she's normally quite good on that one, but it obviously not her night on beam. Quarter beat is 965. Hasn't done that. 9.487 for Trudy McIntosh in third position at the moment with four competitors still to come. Brennan Dowrick. 28 now. Born in Wagga Wagga. But uh, he's spent most of his life in Canberra and travelling the world performing gymnastics. He says the high bar is his favourite apparatus. Ten years ago he got a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. Nicely done. Stalled it through to Kutchev. Stoop in. Brennan's very nice at all of this stoop in work. He stoops into reverse grip. Stoop in. Pirouette. Excellent in bar work. He's got all of his combinations out of the way. Just his L grip giants. And a stuck dismount would be just great to see. Just about. And I have to say he should be happy with that routine. Knowing him, he probably wouldn't be happy entirely with the dismount, but the rest of the routine looking very good. There's his stall to end catch of What's impressive about the routine is his control through all of his intricate pirouette work. There he does a stoop in, another stoop in to reverse grip. 
Well, there's, there's no problem with swinging like this. It's an eight part. 9.225 for Brennan Dowrick. Good job. Good. Women's dance cross on beam, Andrea is a rescue of Romania. Silver medalist on the floor. Andrea is a Lip layout to two, small overbalance, but nothing too serious. Change leg side leap. Front salto, changement jump, that's well performed. And the front salto's on the beam, they're looking for height and good landing position with the chest up. Whoops, no, she's off the beam. Couldn't hang on, tried to. Certainly did try hard. She just about made another error coming back in there. But a fall from the beam, he's got a ruler out of the medal. This is all a bit academic once the fall comes into play. The flip layout to do. Just a slight overbalance, just relaxing a little bit as she's finishing the element. Front salto changement, and that again is very nice. In both men's and women's apparatus competition, the genius falls on the apparatus or touches the ground. Just watching the, the change leg leap and she does the shushin over but jumps backwards too far and can't hold a support. So at this stage, Trudy McIntosh will remain in the medals. She's a rescue, a disappointing 8.912. In the men's horizontal bar final, representing Japan. Now, there's no relationship. Seito Yoshihiro. Yoshihiro Seito, top qualifier for the high bar final with a 9.625. Score to beat belongs to Svetlikny of Ukraine, 9.437. Very nice layout, Kovacs. And there's that hop one and a half to reverse grip. So two difficult elements. Confident worker. Excellent routine. Is he lining up for another gold medal? He's already won the vault this evening. No surprise to see him doing well on the high bar, fourth at the World Championships last year. And here's that layout, Kovacs. Gee, they can only see the bar at the last and millisecond. And that's the hop, one and a half to reverse. Yes, is a look at it from this view, you see how scary it is. And he uses the hop one and a half again. Double twisting double in layout position. And score for Sato. Well, he is in gold medal position with a 9.55. Almost back him in from there. Queen Wan Wan of China has been one of the best beam workers in the world in recent years. Surprisingly, only qualified for the final in fifth position. 
found a flat, small overbalance. Yes, Kui had one of the most difficult programs on beam. She's cut back a little bit in her composition and acrobatic elements at this point, but I wouldn't be surprised if she comes back to her old form come Olympic Games time. Had a small injury or an injury last year which had precluded her from being in the World Championship team. Flip, flip, layout, so high. You can see why she normally does a full twist in there. She's got superb technique. Wolf jump three quarters. Flip, lay out, lay out. Hours and hours of training per week go onto this apparatus. Wolf jump, step out through to Corbett, full twist. Slightly heavy on the landing. Good dismount. A good routine. Is it good enough to beat Sarah Morrow? As a direct comparison, I felt Morrow's beam looked a little bit lighter. Look at this, flip to two, flip to two, completely stretched throughout that layout. And then another series, flip, layout, layout. She makes it look easy. Certainly does. And just a small adjustment on the landing. She's smiling and she should. She's the gold medalist at the moment at 9.7. On the minute, Horizontal Bar, representing France. Florent Marie comes in as the fourth highest qualifier on the high bar with a 9.5. 955 is the one to beat at the moment from Saito. Follow in the footsteps of teammate Jan Kushiro, who picked up gold on parallel Ooh, bars. Too close to the bar. Layout Kovacs always down. Far too late on his catch, coming underneath the bar just as he's about to catch, and the gravity force on that one is incredible. crowd collectively holds their breath when the gymnast leaves the bar and hopes that they'll re-grab. Yes, well, he did fall in his warm-up. We didn't see that on screen, but he had trouble with it then. So, unable to make the adjustment. Stoop in. Stoop in half through. Oh, gosh, he's having a bad night. Wondering if he should keep going, won't he? Well, you have to see what he's planning to do. No, I think he's going to. What's he doing? Yeah, he's choosing to carry on. Good on him. Well, a million things must rush through their heads at this point. Not only just recovering from the fall, but now where do I pick this up? What am I going to try and do? Yeah. Me in mind, he's only 19. A respectful clap coming from the audience. I suggest he'll just do his dismount and call it a day. No, he's going to carry on. He's got his L grips in there. Well, there was plenty of support from fellow Jim. Well, Australia's medal hopes on the balance beam now resting on the shoulders of Melinda Cleland. Trudy McIntosh has dropped out of the medal standings. We're in with the second last of our beam finalists. Solid mount. Mm. 
nice quality on those two leaks, showing full amplitude in the split. Change leg side leg, straddle half, Shushan over support, perfectly connected. The stick would be handy, in fact it's essential. Yes! Oh, well done Melinda Cleveland. And that's the first stuck dismount we've seen this evening. And what a great time to do a routine like that. It's good to see Melinda back up to her fine form that she showed us last year. And there's the change leg leap, change leg side leap and little circle around the beam. Change leg side, straddle half, straddle jump to support. is going to have to build her confidence. Glues the feet to the ground. It's her one and only final here and she's made the most of the opportunity at 9.675 and with one competitor to go, Melinda Cleland is guaranteed a medal. Representing China. Well, Zheng Lihu comes into the high bar final following the withdrawal of Omar Cortez, who hurt his knee in the vault final. And Zheng with gold medal in all around, silver on the floor, silver on parallel bars. If you could uh, pull one out of the blue here, he's uh, a charge for excess baggage going home, all the medals. Pin. He's in his eagle grip. Now he's doing his eagle grip endos. Just taps his feet on the bar a little bit. But those three elements in succession are giving him a lot of bonus points. Layout Jaeger catches it well. Oh, struggling in the handstand pirouette. That was the easy part, well, supposedly. Double, double. <laughs> Maybe got a bit excited after he's got through all the difficult parts of his routine that can happen sometimes <laughs> he has a bit of a shake well he's happy he's, uh, he's finished his work here at the international challenge and there's that stoop in through to eagle position then he does an endo circle in eagle position and then stoops in again very very difficult he may well be laughing about what you were Liz that he'd done the hard bits and then yeah there he goes, he's doing his Jaeger from Eagle Grip. Let's see this handstand pirouette, he gets the, <laughs> the shakes. Anyway, he's done a good routine. Be interesting to see which way the judges go on this one. Zeng Li, who was first reserve for the high bar final and came in for Cortez. And I'm uh, sure he's not going to finish eighth be considerably better than that and he's in bronze medal position at the moment Zheng Li who with a 9-3 and only one to come final female competitor is Ludovine Fernand of France and a chance to clinch a medal here the fourth highest qualifier Beautiful amplitude on that leap. Small hesitation in the connection. A 
Little cat leap. Side summy, yes. And technically, coaches are not allowed to call out during the routine. Can hear something going on in the background there. Flip, lay out, flip. Coach calling, and I'll be surprised if there's not some questions about that. Just because it's in French doesn't mean to say they don't know she's calling. Whoop, she's off. Well, it didn't help, did it? No, it certainly didn't. Could even have been a little distracting because it's been going on all routine. normally acceptable to call out and say stick or something at the end but certainly not technical corrections <laughs> well the encouragement from the world from the sidelines hasn't helped sort of been fern on it's hard to know who was calling out there because she's got a male coach with her that uh, sounded like french <laughs> Nice side salto, good lift, perfect landing. Flip, lay out and flip. And here's where she came to grief. Actually quite low in the salto and one leg just sliding down the side. Burn on out of contention here in the beam final. I'm wondering if it wasn't her teammate, Teza, calling. Could well have been a 9.125. Naoya Sukahara with the last performance of this meet. And uh, from one of the best gymnasts. He's not mucking around, straight up and away. Full twisting Kovacs catches it full stretch. And a second one. He's in bar work, a little bit short on the handstand there. Healy turned to L grip. This could be the gold medal routine if he does a good dismount. Oh, that spoiled it for Sukahara. Well, it's never over until it's over. Look at all this difficult work here. Full twist over the bar and catches. So double back, full twist over the bar. And a second one, both done exceptionally well, only to be denied the top score he could have done by relaxing on the dismount. A big deduction there. Well, it's disappointed he hasn't been able to beat his teammate, uh, Saito, but it's Japan who get the gold, though. Saito grabs that. Sukahara gets the bronze. So... Yoshihiro Saito, a gold medal in the high bar with a 955. Alexander Svetlikny of Ukraine gets the silver. And Oya Sukahara, the bronze. Then it's Zeng of China, Daurik of Australia, Supala of Hungary, Caballo of Spain, and Florent Marie of France. And the Chinese dominating the balance beam final. Kui Yuan Huan taking the gold with a 9.7. Another minor medal for the Aussies, Melinda Cleland taking the silver. And Sarah Morrow of Spain, the bronze medal. Men, horizontal bar gold medal. Representing Japan, Yoshihiro Saito. Well, Saito, gold medalist on the vault and also on high bar. So a great last day for him at the international challenge. Silver medalist on men's horizontal bar representing Ukraine. 
Alexander Svetichny. Well, Svetichny's really been a revelation with his consistency across so many apparatus. A 9-4-3-7 on high bar. And Naoya Sukahara, second in the all-around. He just, well, he almost expected him to win one of the apparatus finals. He was in five of them. That's silver on ring, bronze here on high bar. from the injury that kept her out of last year's World Championships. Hui Wan Wan takes the gold with a 9.7 on the balance beam. Really seems to enjoy herself too, doesn't she, Anne Marie? She's I think she's happy just to be back and competing and, and getting a taste for this Sydney Superdome. I'm sure we'll see her back in September. Wow, Melinda Cleland wins Australia's first silver medal of this meet, taking our tally to three goals, one silver and three bronze. An outstanding performance from the Australian team. And a well-deserved bronze medal for the tiny Sara Morrow of Spain. Ladies and gentlemen, so the final standings, Kui Yuan Wan, Melinda Cleland and Sara Mora. to be back to top form again? Oh, it's great. I've missed it a lot and I'm back in action. <laughs> uh, last year at the uh, national championships you were in the all-around placings. You had a really good first half of the year. What happened in the second half? Um, well, um, for Worlds I got the calf injury. I tore my calf just before we left and then after that I suppose a bit of time off and it was just hard to get back into it but a lot of hard training and I mean I've learnt now. I suppose it's a growing thing. I've learnt a lot of things from it and I know that it's only going to make me better. And you must have been particularly happy with your routine t this evening? Yeah, well, so nervous going into it and really shaky but I managed to stay calm and ended up doing a really nice routine. And I noticed you were the only girl who actually stuck to dismount tonight. Oh, tell you the truth, that was a bit of a fluke. <laughs> I've really been doing that in training but I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> OK, congratulations, Melinda. We're all very proud of your silver medal on beam tonight. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up an outstanding day of competition and undoubtedly a sneak preview of what's to come in September at the Sydney Olympic Games. I'm Anne-Marie Carey. Thanks for your company.